to God be the glory and praise. We would like to share to you the dream that my daughter had uh, just this August 17. And it has something to do with the persecution, uh, the rapture of the saints. And uh, I, would like, uh, I would like her to share it to you. And before we start, we would like to start it with uh, Revelation 2 verse 10. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. And you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. This is the word of God. And I will let her share to you the dream that she had. In my dream, we have a house in a farmland and when at the beginning of the dream this happened i was in the living room with my family and other families around and we started praying and then after we prayed i i prayed longer and i was like lord when the time comes include me and my family into the rapture so that we won't face persecution and pain and after I said that prayer I opened my eyes and bef and while we were and we were praying when we were praying my family was right next to me and after I prayed they they were gone so so I was like where did they go so I went around the living I I was looking for them so I went to the second living room and when I went to the second living room, I saw my mom sitting on a sofa with a baby on her chest. She was laying down and she was looking outside the window. And I was like, who is she looking to? Or who is she looking at? And, and so I look at the direction where her head was looking at. And I saw my dad. And my dad was standing next to another farmer who was working for us. I believe he was working for us. And and then my dad and him, they looked like they were discussing something. Something about the farm or something like that. And I looked around, I saw f workers, um, workers and other farmers harvesting on the ground. They were harvesting and some were planting. And then when I look away, I heard a voice, I mean, I heard a scream, and when I heard that scream, it was coming from where my dad's direction, and then they said, they're coming, they're coming, and me, I was like, in, in my head and in my heart, I know who was coming, but I kept looking, and I was like, who's coming, so I was looking outside the window, and then people started running to their houses, to our house. My dad and the other farmer was running towards our house. And the people, the workers that was there, they were running to their house, like running for their life. And then I was still looking. I was like, who's, who's running? It was, who's coming? And then I was still looking and I saw soldiers. And they looked like soldiers um like spartans i don't know if you guys are spartans, familiar with yeah. yeah um they were dressed in red and they had spheres on their hand and they were like killing and stabbing people that was like in front of them and then i began to panic i was like <gasps> they're here so in my head i was planning for an escape i was like maybe we can go to our back through our back house to the back of our house and then run for our life and be safe. So I looked towards the back of the house, which there was an open window as well. And when I look, there were people running that way too, and they were running for their lives. And then in my head, I was like, and then I saw soldiers coming that way too. And so in my head, I was sad. I was like, there's no way no way around we're stuck we're gonna die 
and there's no escape, so we're gonna die. Let's just sta stay still and not be afraid. And after that, I walked towards the back, and when I was there, the soldiers. When I reached the the back, the back of the house, um, the soldiers had the bow and arrow, and they started throwing bow and arrow towards us. And then it was hit. The people that was inside the living room of our house was like unaware, and they ran outside where I was standing and then some of them got shot and they get killed and I began to panic I was like I'm gonna die with a bow and arrow and I'm gonna feel the pain I wonder how it's gonna feel like so in my head all these thoughts and the fears are like running in my head and I started to freak out and then one of my siblings jumped in front of me and then got shot with an arrow and died right in front of me and that made me scared even more cuz i saw like how she di how she died and and after that i began to panic and f began to become more fear and next thing you know i was like just close your eyes i told myself to just close my eyes and just not be afraid because it's I'm gonna die quick and I'm not I'm just gonna feel the pain for a few seconds so I closed my eyes and I moved to where my sister is standing so I could get shot and I get I would die quickly but I've been waiting and waiting so I was closing my eyes and then I was waiting for an arrow to hit me but it never came so I opened my eyes and I, I, when I was closing my eyes, I can hear like screams, like horrible screams, like being killed. Like if you hear someone being killed, like you know how they would scream so loud and so scary. And so I opened my eyes and then I saw my grandmother and then my mom and then my cousin sitting right in front of the window. And they were just looking down. They were saying... They were just looking down, and then they were just waiting for their death, like, waiting for the soldier to kill them. And then, so, me, and then the soldiers were, like, very close. They were a few feet from our house, and they took the sword, they took a sword out. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna die by a sword, and that was really scary. That made me panic even more, because sword, that's like very painful and so in my head I knew I was gonna die by sword and so instead of me freaking out and running around the house I know they were gonna kill us all anyway so to comfort myself I started uh, I started singing the Our Father the Lord's Prayer the Lord's Prayer and I started singing, Our Father in Heaven. And then my grandmother and my mom and my cousin started singing with me. And then while we were singing that prayer, I was walking slowly towards my cousin and I sat right next to her. And then we both wrap each other's, like we both wrap our arms around each other and we looked down and we, we were like in tears, crying. But we were still singing, like reminding ourselves to not fear, like we were praying to the Lord, the prayer of the Lord. And then next thing you know, the soldiers were right in front of us. The soldiers stabbed my mom in the stomach. And then I began to panic, I, but I kept on singing to comfort myself and to not, like, so that I won't get distracted and fear more so I started singing the Our Father again like I kept on singing and then after I was singing holy be your name and then they went right next to me stabbed my cousin and my cousin that was like so close to me she fell and I saw that and then that scared me even more cuz it was it was like building 
in the I fear. Was, yeah, yeah, it was building within me, and I was very like. It was very suspense and very intense, and the, I I kept on singing and singing. I forget about the pain that they're going through, like what I'm seeing. I'm focusing. I'm focusing on the song, and then next thing you know, they went to my grandmother and stabbed my grandmother. And the official that was ordering the small man, the official was with other armies and the high official ordered one of the soldiers to stab all of us while we were sitting down and then right when the soldier finished stabbing my grandmother just once the high official called my the the high official called the one who was stabbing and then they were like discussing for a few seconds and I'm like still praying I was like praying <laughs> and I was crying even more because I was like waiting for and then next thing you know right when they came in front of me they stabbed me and then they went back and forth like a violin like I felt my guts go back and forth and you can feel the pain of the stab and I just like freaked out and then after I felt the pain, I just pushed his hand away because he kept on doing this. And so I pushed his hand away and he slowly pulled his hand out. And he did that because while they were running or they were coming towards us, they saw that I started the song. And so it's like it was like a punishment for what yeah. I did. and But after that, I... I died slowly, and I was like, and at the very beginning, I wanted to die quick, I wanted quick, but when they stabbed me, it was very slow, I died very slow, I was the only one who died slow, so I died slow, and then, and then I died, and the next thing you know, I gasped um, a huge amount of air, and then I stood up, and then I felt so new, I had new body, new mindset. Um, I felt so brand new. Praise God. Praise God. So in my head, I have a feeling I, w I went back to life. Well, I did went back to life because I died and then took a large amount of air and it went and it uh, took a deep breath and then I went. I stood up and the soldiers that was like sitting by laughing and like celebrating or something. They saw that I woke up and that I stood up and they all panic, panic, and they all freaked out. They're like, oh, didn't she die? And then I was, in my head, nothing was going on in my head because I wasn't thinking of anything else. And then the pain that I felt, I didn't feel it anymore. It was like I was given a new body and a new soul. And ref I was brand new. And then next thing you know, I stood up and I was walking outside. And then once I was walking outside, um, the people that was by this, I was walking on the sidewalk. And it is, it's a sidewalk stairs. It, it's a cement going up like this, an elevated stairs. And I was walking and the people that was dead, that was like lying next to the sidewalk and on the ground, some were cut in half, and then some were just stabbed, but they're dead, they're on the ground. And while I was walking on the stairs, I can see them from the side of my eyes and like right in front of me. I could see them stand up, like they would gas air, gasp air, breathe in air, and then they would stood up, and then they would get up. And then they would walk right behind me. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. And I saw those, and then people that was cut in half, their whole body just became one. And they took the breath of life, or a gas, a deep breath, and then they stood up, and then they formed a line behind me. And I was the first one in line. And then the people that was dead, they started forming a line behind me. And while I was walking, um... I started saying, I start, um, 
the words came out of my mouth. I wasn't planning it, but it just came out. It came out of my mouth. And it was I was singing Jesus like over and over again and I was saying Jesus is coming like in a singing voice like not right now but <laughs> in a singing voice and then and then I was singing that song and then people was walking right behind me we were forming two lines my parents was right next to each other holding hands like I didn't even know they were my parents or anything I was just walking and I heard like a movement to my left and it turned this way while I was walking and then in my head I was like that's your parents and that's your yeah that's your mom and your dad and then I kept looking straight and kept walking like that's all that came in my head I wasn't saying oh look that's mom like that didn't came in my head but in someone's my... whispering to you yes yeah, it was like a whisper of that saying that's you. your mom and your dad oh praise God and then we kept walking and then you can hear like, is it like a synchronized step? Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Like you know, if there's an army and they walk at the same time, it's like like they do the marching. Yeah, marching. That's how it sounded like for the people that was alive again. They were like right behind me. That's how it sounded like. And then I was singing, "Jesus is coming." And I was Are they singing, singing with you also, or you're the only one singing? I was the only one singing. I didn't know why. Okay. And then. <laughs> and then I started singing that. I guess I just like to sing. Well, I do like to sing. And then we were walking towards a flat field. And while we were on the while we were walking towards the flat field, all of us looked up. And then right before us was a cloud, a white cloud, and it was a clear sky with the white You were cloud. talking about there's like a staircase. Are you walking on that open field with a staircase or you're walking on the field only? It's a stairs. It's a stairs. Like coming from our house. It's like a sidewalk. Okay. You know? So it's like on earth stairs going uphill because the land of the house was like elevated uh -huh. kind of. So uh -huh. it's like slopey. Uh -huh. And it was the stairs going up. Okay. So we were walking, and at the top was like a flat land, okay. so that's where we were heading. Okay. And then when we were there, well, we were walking towards the flat field, um, we all looked up in the sky, and then we saw white clouds, and while we were walking, we saw white cloud, and next thing you know, it just opened up, and then angels came out, and then a lot of angels came Do out they of the have clouds. wings or anything? Um, no, I How do they look like? How do they look like? They look. They were wearing white, but they had breastplate and they had swords and helmet. So in my head, I was like, that's probably God's army and mm -hmm. soldier. Mm -hmm. And it was God's army and God's soldier coming out of that cloud. And we finally reached the flat field. And we formed lines, like an army, like we just stood, we weren't planning to, our, just, our body just walked, like we already knew what we were doing. And then the, ar the God's army, God's soldier that came out of the clouds, they went to the left, to the right, and a couple went towards our way on the flat field, and they stood right in front of us. And then, next thing you know... And you were telling they're An surrounding army. all of you, right? They surrounded all of you or they're scattered? No, there was... Since we l formed a line uh -huh. and uh, God's army was like right in front of the line and then the oh. next line there was another f soldier of God standing. So it's like... Okay. They were like okay. kind of like leader. Mm -hmm. So after that, it was like a snap of a finger. We were brought into the... In a white room... So it's a white like, place. It's like in white. just an instant you were all gone. Yeah, it, in an instant we were brought in this white room, and we were all wearing white. Everyone so was happy. We were all welcomed by the angels and the people that was wearing white. Though in that room or in that place, they were wearing white already, and they were welcoming us. And then I was the first one in my family to like enter. And 
one of the angels offered me uh, a sword, a breastplate, and like a helmet, and all that stuff. And in my head, I was like, that's toys. Like, they're offering you toys. And I'm like... <laughs> So when she when the angel offered me, I was like, "Oh no, thank you. I don't I don't think I need a toy." <laughs> so I was like, uh, "No, thank you." But the angel hesitated. Like the angel was like, "Are you sure?" But the angel wasn't speaking. He was just like showing yeah, action. Offering, yeah, yeah, offering like, "Are you sh like smiling like, are you sure?" <laughs> and I'm like, "No, thank you." Like I was smiling and laughing. I was like, "No, I'm good." Are you the only one being offered, or they offered also the others? No, they were offering everyone, like, D do you want this? Some said yes, maybe some said no. I said no, <laughs> and I regret. Because, <laughs> yeah, because when I woke up, when I woke up that dream, I was like, I think that was God's full armor, why didn't I accept it? <laughs> And you want to accept it, the and full armor. Yes, I do yeah. want to accept it. So yeah, they were offering the full armor. Mm -hmm. And my siblings took the full armor. And they were wearing it. And, I, and then they were offering something else. And then I was like, no, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> like other options. And then I was like, I should have gotten the sword. <laughs> So I kind of like had the regret and... But you, yeah. you're not supposed to regret. We because, shouldn't regret. But all we have to do is ask the Lord that, you know, Lord, I want to be... I want to have the full armor of God so I'm ready always. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Uh, I actually asked her and I actually begged her <laughs> to speak to you today. <laughs> that I said I, I can actually share to you the dream. But I want her exactly to say it the way she saw it, you know, the, uh, in detail. I, yeah, in detail. And I know this is very relevant. It's it's giving me, it's giving us like a hope, you know. Confirmation. Yes, it's like a warning, and at the same time, uh, it's a warning, and at a the same promise. like uh, a <laughs> warning and a promise, a warning that we need to get ready. Of the persecution that's going to come. And at the same time, a promise of God that He's going to give us new body. He's going to give us His breath of life. That we will be, we will be raptured in heaven. So, we don't know how the rapture is going to be. But it's written in the Bible. Okay? So, let's go to... Uh, let, you know, when, he, when she was telling about the harvest. Go to Matthew 9. The people are harvesting that time. Matthew 9 verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will, will, will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. So, you know, uh, we don't know what the harvest the harvest is actually the lord is getting ready to get his people mm -hmm. okay and the people are harvesting and at the same time they're planting planting the seed of the word of god yes. and so now uh what happened why were they killed in revelation 14 verse 15 then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud take your sickle and reap because the time to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Revelation 16 and 17, 14 verse 16 to 17. So he who was seated on the cloud, sowing his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Another angel came out of the temple of heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. So the Lord is already ready to get all of us. Yes. And so now, when the people died, why did they came back to life? When she was telling the story, I was so excited because I'm trying to picture out, you know, the, the, the truth of God's words. He's actually revealing to us right now His promise in Revelation. Revelation, verse, uh, Revelation 11, verse 11. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet. And terror struck those who saw them. 
Yeah. Imagine when they came back to life, they just gasped for air. And then when they came back to life, all the soldiers were so scared. Yeah. See? It's it's amazing. I did Praise not God. make this up. It was from my dream, and I don't plan in my dream. Yeah, and then just when she was telling this story, I was telling her, you know what? Look at this one. Look at the breath of life. And then we started Google. We Google everything. Bible and then, verses. Yeah, Bible that can verses to this to this dream because we want to yeah. get the confirmation that it's yeah. coming from the Lord, and that's what we're trying to share to you right now. So when they came back to life and they were walking and looking up the sky, so we Google again, Bible verse about looking at sky, and this is where we led. Revelation 1 verse 7, Look, He is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see Him, even those who pierce Him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of Him. So shall it be. Amen. Yeah. So, oh, praise God. And how about that time when... Uh, when they were surrounded by the angels, the heaven opened up. Remember, the Lord will come out. And uh, the, angels the angels went down, yes. around, you know, went down. And then in a, in a second, they were gone and they were in the room. So they're like taken. Yeah. They were like raptured. So we look again about the rapture Bible verse. And here on First Thessalonians 4, verse 16 to 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead shall rise first. <laughs> then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and, sh and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Praise be to God. Amen. See, oh Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord God. See the promise of the Lord. We are so scared of being, you know, of dying. But remember the Lord's Prayer? They're singing the Lord's Prayer. I tell you, it's very powerful. I tell you, literally, I've been attacked by a devil. But, yeah, and then we pray that and then they will be gone. And you can see the sword of the Lord coming from his mouth. It's like a needle, like lightning that will two kill them. Sword. Yeah, two double-edged sword. The power of the Lord's prayer. Oh, my goodness. The when the, yeah, yes, powerful. Jesus Christ, thank you. And see the promise. It's a warning that all of us, all of us, please, if you haven't found the Lord, please repent. Repent now before it's too late. It's not going to be much longer. He's already coming. He's already coming. He's getting ready, his soldier and his warriors. And we are one of them. If you didn't repent, please pray. Go on your knees and ask the Lord and say, Lord, you know, if you don't believe in us, it's okay. But believe in the word of God. Believe in the Bible. That's his word. And then try to go on your knees and pray. Say, Lord Jesus, if you are real, show yourself to me and tell me what to do. I want to repent. Please, before it's too late. And if you repent, ask for forgiveness and ask the Lord's blessing and guidance. And he will. Amen. Yeah, and be baptized and be born again. And always pray for the Holy Spirit. Ask for forgiveness all the time. And ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you to walk in righteousness. And uh, if you are, if you already repented, the Lord always say, He wants us to be productive. You know, He will remember the parable of the coin. If, they get, if the Lord trusted us, he loves us and He forgave us. We want also the others to be led back to the Lord. And uh, we can do it in our own little ways. Okay? The Lord's using us. We can't do it ourselves. But with the presence of God and with all the presence of the Holy Spirit. All things are possible in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs> all things are possible in the name of Christ. She is 15 years old. And... I know a lot of children, teenagers like you there, out there. Please, make it as a habit. Be an example in your school. When you take your lunch, have a short prayer. Pray and, and talk to, the other, uh, to other friends. 
If people are so mean and everything, be an example to guide them and lead them back to the Lord. You know, uh, show your love, your compassion, your kindness, and um, and ask the Lord to guide you. So may the Lord bless each and every one of us. And uh, may the Lord guide us and may the Lord shine His face upon us. And thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for allowing us for allowing us to, to praise share. you and yes. to testify for your glory and praise. To God be the glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen.